I'm just waiting for the guys to. Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, this talk will present you a quite unknown feature of Postgres, and this feature is its hook system. But first, a few words about me. My name is uh, Guillaume Lelarge. I'm one of the translators of the Postgres manual. We translate the Postgres SQL manual in French since the 7.4 release. I'm one of the developers of pgadmin, and um, I do a lot of other stuff on Postgres and uh, related, related tools on Postgres. For work, I work at Dalibo, which is a PostgreSQL uh, company. We do a lot of stuff on Postgres, mostly trainings, support, and auditing. Well, enough about me. Postgres is really well known for its extensibility. Many people know that you can add your own user types, you can add functions that handle user types, you can add operators which use those functions, and you can do lots of other, other, other stuff. You can have many languages, for example, to uh, code your functions. Actually, the, the extensibility of Postgres is so important uh, to the project that one of the most interesting features of 9.1 is its extensions object. The extension object helps you to add new features, and new user types, new functions, to your Postgres database. So with all this going on on the extensibility, it's rather strange, rather weird, that the hook system in itself is really less known. What's a hook? A hook, the aim of hooks, is to interrupt and modify the usual behavior of Postgres. It allows a developer to add new features without having to add it to the core of Postgres. It's not a well-known uh, feature because it's actually quite recent. The first hook appeared in 8.3. In 8.3, you have five hooks available. In 8.4, you got eight more hooks. In 9.0, you get two more hooks. And in 9.1, five more. So right now, you have around 20 hooks available to modify the behavior of Postgres. But actually, the biggest issue is that it's at, not at all explained in the documentation. You can search through all the documentation. You have nothing about the hooks and how to cut functions that use the hooks available in Postgres. You have four kinds of hooks. It's, uh, yeah, four kinds of hooks. Hooks on the planner, hooks on the executor, hooks, hooks specific to security and permissions, and hooks for the PLPGSQL language. So right now, we will see all these hooks. First, on the planner hooks. So you, you have um, eight hooks available for the planner. It's mostly used uh, by uh, some uh, plugins, uh, such as the plan tuner and the plan steer, which allows you to um, have a way to change the behavior of the planner. On the executor hooks, I believe that everyone in this room already use, at least uh, known about a plugin called pgstat statements. pgstat statements is a contrib module that is able to uh, get all 
the queries executed by Postgres and get a few statistics on it. And how does PGSTAT statements work? It uses all these hooks. So, uh, for example, the executor start, run, finish, and to get information about which queries are executed, how many rows they read, uh, how many buffers they used, etc. The process utility hook is also used by the PGSTAT statements contrib module. It's also used by uh, an extension written, written by Dimitri Fontaine, which is called PGXWList, which is an extension that allows someone to have a white list of extensions that you can install. You've got also hooks on security and permissions. So for example, you have the check password hook. It's a simple hook that allows you to check passwords according to your enterprise rules. So it's a hook that is called when a user is created or when a user definition of a user is changed. The client authentication hook is a hook which is called when someone tries to connect. So it's used by many modules such as the odd delay, which is another country module which allows you to uh, wait a bit if the last authentication failed. SRPGSQL also use it to add more um, checks to allow or deny a connection. And you have another bunch of uh, hooks usually used by the SCPGSQL plugin. PLPGSQL, you have five hooks available for PLPGSQL. You have the hook that is called when you do the declare section of a function, of a PLPGSQL function. You have the Frank underscore beg hook, which is called when you start executing the begin of a function, func end for the end of the function, stmt underscore beg for the beginning of a statement, and stmt underscore end for the end of a statement. It's used by three modules, as far as I know, which are the debugger, the profiler provided by EnterpriseDB, and by another uh, tool that I wrote called log underscore functions. And you get another one. I said there was only four kind of hooks. Actually, there is another one kind of hooks, which I couldn't put it in a specific uh, category, which is the SHMAME startup hook. It's a hook that is called when Postgres needs to uh, ask for shared memory to the system. It's used by the PGStat statements module to record every queries executed in shared memory. So I didn't speak about the initial release in all those hooks, but as you can see, it starts with 8.3, and we've got more and more of them till the 9.1. So how do they work inside Postgres? Hooks consist of global function pointers. It's initially set to null, and when PostgreSQL may have to execute it, it checks if the global function pointer is still set to null, and if it isn't, it executes the function pointer. So all you have to do to execute a function is to set this global function pointer and provide a function that will be executed. How do we set the function Pointer. Actually, uh, a hook function will be available through a shared library. A shared library is a .so or .dll file that is installed in the lib directory of Postgres. When Postgres has to load a shared library, it first loads it into memory, and then it executes a function inside this shared library called underscore pg underscore init. And this function needs to set the pointer. 
It may save the previous one to be able to call it if he wants to do it. But the, the, main, uh, the main function, the main, um, the main work the PG, the underscore PG underscore init function needs to do is to set the global function pointer. How do we unset the function pointer? We unset it at unload time. At unload time, Postgres calls another function of the shared library called underscore PG underscore finish. And this function will unset its pointer. Usually, it simply restore the previous one so that the previous one can still be called. So here is an example of how it is um, put in PostgreSQL source code. So this is an extract of uh, the uh, auth underscore h file in Postgres. You have a type declaration which shows you how you should write this function. You need to write a function that will have two arguments, two parameters, a structure, a port, and an integer. So this is how it is declared in Postgres. And then in the uh, PostgreSQL source file, there is a declaration of a variable called client authentication underscore hook, which is set to nil right now. Yes? When you install the function with the, with the in it, do any of our hooks chain uh, calls? So, for example, if somebody had already defined a hook, yeah. do we run our code and then do we, can we call them? Or is it, we don't need that. But, but Postgres doesn't do it itself. It's the responsibility of the extension of the shared library. When it calls its own function, it should check if it has a previous okay. hook and then calls it. Uh, well, well-written hook will do that. Um, so this is the variable we will need to uh, change when uh, the underscore pg underscore init function is called. When Postgres will have done the authentication on its part, it will check if the hook is set to something other than nil and calls it. So now we will write a few hooks. We will, uh, don't, so we will go into much better details on how to write hooks. And we will do th so not on every hooks available. We will just grab this one, the client authentication, the executor hook, the check password, and the fact underscore bag hook. So we will explain how useful they are. We will list already available extensions using them, and we will see how to write the shared library that uses this hook. So first we start with the client authentication hook. Now the client authentication hook get control just after client authentication but it gets it before the user is informed. Which means that it's really useful to do yourself an authentication on something else, to record login events, or to insert a delay after a failed authentication. So we already have a few modules that use these hooks, the delay. Odile is a contrib module available with uh, PostgreSQL source code. It has a configurable delay that uh, allows you to, um, that helps you to avoid DOS attacks. So you have your authentication. After the authentication, a failed authentication, a delay is inserted so that you cannot right away try to connect again. SAPG SQL requires some specific SLinux context to a low connection. So these two are available in the PostgreSQL source file in the contrib subdirectory of its source files. 
And then you have another one, which is connection underscore limits, written by Thomas Vondra. It's available on GitHub. Connection limits give you more control on the number of connections available uh, than what you have with Postgres. With Postgres, you only have a GUC, max underscore connections, that allows you to limit the number of uh, connections uh, per instance, per cluster. But with connection limits, you can have a limit in connections per user, per database, or per IP address. The client authentication hook function, as we said previously, has two parameters. The first one, port, is a complete structure described in a header file of Postgres, where you can get the remote host, the remote host name, the remote port, the database name, the username, GUC options, and a few other things. The status integer is a status code, which basically say if the connection is uh, accepted or denied. So this example will show you how you can add, uh, write a client authentication hook. What we will try to do is to forbid, to deny a connection if a file is present on your file system. So we will need two functions. We will need one function to install the hook. It's the uh, underscore pg underscore init a function that we will set. And in this function, what we will do is set the client authentication hook global function pointer. The second one is there to check the availability, the presence of the file, and if the file is present, allow or deny the connection. So first, we need to initialize the hook. The initialization of the hook happens in the underscore pg underscore init function. So we first have uh, the record of the previous uh, client authentication hook. So we save it here. And then on the client authentication hook, we set it with our own functions, which is available here. So this function is quite simple. There are the two parameters that we talked about before. If there was a previous hook, we first call it. We call it before because if this, uh, if this hook denies the connections, we don't want to do our checks. So we first, um, we first execute the previous hook. If the previous hook allows the connection, we will check if the file we want is available or not. So here we simply check if we have the slash tmp slash connection that stop file on the file system. If it is here, we do a e report with a fatal log level. And we simply throw this error message in the log. So if the file is present, all you have is a fatal error which denies the connection. And if it isn't, you uh, simply exit the functions and the connection is allowed. We will see a bit later the use of this, uh, of this hook. On the executor hooks, there are four hooks for the executor the executor start, run, finish, and end. Executor start hook is executed at the beginning of the execution of a query plan. The executor run hook may be called more than once. It accepts directions and count. So it's called with, uh, it depends on how many tuples you will have when you execute a query. The executor finish hook is uh, called after the last executor run call, and the executor end is executed at the end of the query plan. There are a lot of contrib modules that use uh, the executor hooks. That's probably the hooks that are the most uh, used. So these kind of hooks are really interesting to get informations 
on executed queries. And the module you probably all have already, uh, already know is PGStat Statements. PGStat Statements is a contrib module that uh, will get a bit of shared memory. And each time a query is executed, it gets the executed query, the, the string of the executed query. It gets a few informations on the executed query, its duration, how many um, buffers it used, that kind of things, and put them into memory. And then you have a view that allows you to get this information from this module. AutoExplain is another module uh, quite interesting, also available in the uh, PostgreSQL source code. So this this uh, module will execute automatically, will log automatically the explain plan of each query executed. PG logs user queries uh, is how I, uh, I find about hooks. Uh, I was working at a customer office, and this uh, customer wanted to be able to log every query executed by super users. And it only wanted this kind of queries because he wanted to be able to do um, auditing of the super users. So PGLog user queries is a specific module that you can get on GitHub, which uh, only log queries according to some specific uh, configuration. Query histogram and query recorder are two uh, author extensions written by Tom Avondra. <coughs> query, query histogram is used to build a duration histogram of all queries executed. And query recorder allows you to log queries executed in different log files. On the executor hand hook function, which will be the one we will use for the example, we have only one parameter, which is a structure, query, de query desk, which allows you to get information on the command type. Is it an insert? Is it an update? Is it a create extension, etc. On the query, uh, on the query string, on an instrumentation uh, structure, which gives you lots of information on uh, uh, statistics um, gathered during the execution of the query, etc. So if we want to write an executor handhook, this example will uh, allow you to log queries executed only by super user, uh, super user users. So we, need, we will need three functions this time. We'll, we'll need one to install the hook, or we will set the global function pointer. We need one to uninstall the hook, and the last one uh, to do the log. So first, install the hook, exactly the same thing as before. We uh, save the previous executor handhook, and then we set the executor handhook with our own function. Our own function will simply check if the user has the super user attribute, log or not the query, depending on this information, and fire the next hook of the previous one. So this is our function. There is the parameter that we won't use this time, but it's available. We check if the user is a super user. And if it is a super user, we will simply call elog to log the query executed. Actually, we don't log only the query. We log all this, super user, the name of the super user, via this query and the query. And then we call the previous, the previous hook. Super user, get username from ID, get user ID, come straight from Postgres. I didn't write it, it was already available. To uninstall the hook, 
the only thing we have to do is to set the global function pointer to its previous value. Quite easy. Are the functions always unregistered in the same way? Sorry? Are the, uh, the Fini functions always executed in the reverse order? Um, oh, the underscore PG underscore Fini function are called either by when you uh, exit your session or when Postgres is uh, stopped. You have no way to um, you have no way to unload a shared library. It'll always do it in the right order. Yeah. Then we have the check password hook details. Check password is a, a hook which enables a connect, an extension to get control when a user is created or when a user is modified. So when you use the create user statement or the alter user statement. But it gets control before committing the, uh, the statement. So it's really useful if you want to check the password according to some of your enterprise rules. For example, you need uh, to have password with at least eight characters, no less, or you need to check the password against a dictionary. That's the kind of use of this hook. Other possibility, log change of passwords. Or simply disallow plain text passwords. You have two t type of password you can add on the create or alter user statements, encrypted and an encrypted password. But there is one major issue with this hook. It's really, really less effective if you use encrypted password. If you use an encrypted password, you always have the same size of the password. So you cannot check the size of the real password. You cannot check it against a dictionary. It takes more more time to check that kind of things. So this hook is used by a contrib module available in the PostgreSQL source code, which is password check. Password check uh, is an extension, is a contrib module that uh, will do a few checks to make sure that the password is not too weak. Just a few uh, words on password check. Be sure to read the source code of password check before using it so that you can change it and um, modify it to uh, really stick to your enterprise rules. You can also use cracklib with uh, this module. You just have a few lines to uncomment to be able to use it. <coughs> the check password hood functions take five parameters. The username, the password, the password type, which simply says if it is a plain text password or an MD5 password, an encrypted password, and some information on the validity timestamp of the user. So we will write uh, a check password hook function. And this hook will deny the use of plain text passwords. So right, uh, once again, we need two functions mainly, one to install our hook, and one to check if the user tries to use a plain text password or an encrypted password. To install the hook, really exactly the same thing as before. In this example, I don't check the pre I don't record the previous hook, which is bad, but we already see some example <coughs> doing it. And the hook itself. I have my function with these five parameters. And all I do is check if the password is a plain text password. If it is a plain text function, I call the e-report function to report an error to the user saying that he's not allowed to use non-encrypted passwords. <coughs> we'll see later how to use this, uh, this hook 
in the example at the end of the talk. Funkel Oscar Beg. Funkel Oscar Beg is a hook called when Postgres gets to the begin statement of a PLP GSQL functions. So it can be used in many ways. It can be used to start to log the start of each function. It can be used to profile functions. It can be used to debug functions. So the three hooks I know that use it is the PL debugger, which is a debugger for PLP GSQL that you can use with PG admin. It's written by Enterprise DB. You have the PL profiler, which uh, gives you all the details on every statement executed on every PLP GSQL functions. And you have another one, which is uh, log underscore functions, which do quite the same thing that the PL profiler. <coughs> but instead of storing it into a shared memory, it put them in the log file. It's actually quite more efficient, quite more um, really quicker than PL profiler. So the func underscore back functions takes two parameters. One is a structure that gives you information on the execution state of the function. And the second one gives information on the function being executed, meaning you have information on which function you execute, its name, its OID, and a few other things. So we'll simply write a uh, Beg hook function, which logs each, each function executed. So we need first to install the hook, so the first function to install the hook, another function to log the function name. Initialize the hook, well, we've already seen that. We simply set the hooks, a funk underscore big hook, and the function which is executed. This function we simply call elog on the log level. And uh, store, execute function, the name of the function in your log files. How do we compile hooks? Well, this is the usual make file. You have the possibility to use pg underscore uh, pgxs to compile it, which is I, uh, the, certainly the preferred way to uh, compile hooks, to compile a shell library, or you can put it in the contrib subdirectory of your PostgreSQL source code to uh, compile it. So to compile it, you just need to use make. If you use, want to use make with uh, pgxs, you will use this, uh, uh, this variable, this parameter. Be careful that you cannot use pgxs with PGSQL plugins. It will be possible in Lambda 2, thanks to uh, some work from Heike, but it isn't possible in the previous release. So if you want to uh, uh, compile the PL debugger or the PL profiler, you have to uh, copy the source code in the contrib subdirectory at the PostgreSQL source code file. To install, you just need to add the install keywords after make. And what it will do is simply copy <coughs> the .so file in the lib subdirectory of Postgres. If you can use pgxs, it's better. It's better because it's really simpler to do and you can have a much simpler make file to do it. But it's, it's not always possible. For PLPGSQL hooks, you cannot use that yet. So you have two ways to use hooks. First one is to declare them in the shared preload library GURKS. So you first install on the file system in the lib subdirectory of Postgres your shared library, so your .so or .dll file, 
And then in the PostgreSQL.conf uh, file, you will set the shared preload libraries get. Some functions allows you to have uh, other GUC, uh, pgstat statements, for example, give you uh, uh, some control of its execution. But mostly the most important thing to do is to set the shared preload libraries. You can have many uh, libraries uh, set. You just need to separate them with commas. So you can have, for example, shared preload libraries equal PG stat statements, comma, PG log user queries. And then you have to restart Postgres. So for example, if we try to use uh, the uh, hook we, uh, we've seen with a check password hook, which I called only encrypted passwords, I install the hook, the .iso file, in my system. Then in the PostgreSQL.conf file, I set the shared libraries, the shared private libraries GUC to only encrypted passwords, and I restart Postgres. When I restart Postgres, I will have this message, which tells me that he found the shared library and he loaded it. So at this time, the global function pointer of this shared library is set. How do we use it? We don't have to call it, really. It's during the use of Postgres. For example, if I have a user that executes this statement, create user u1 password super secret, the hook will deny the execution of this statement. It will say that the password is not encrypted, and so I cannot create this user. If I use an encrypted password, just like this statement, it will work. My hook allows the uh, use of encrypted password. It works for create user. It works also for alter user. If I try an alter user with an unencrypted password, it's denied. And if I try to use it with an encrypted password, it works. So this is an example of uh, using hooks with the shared preload libraries. <coughs> but you don't need absolutely to uh, set this, um, you don't need to set this GUC. If you set this GUC at, load, at uh, start time, Postgres will set the global function pointer. But sometimes you don't want to use the hook every time. For example, on the PL debugger or, the, mm, or on some other case, you don't want to pay the price of having the hook already installed. You just want to use it at some point. So you still have to install the shared library in uh, your system. And then you can use a statement called load, which allows you to load the shared library at a specific time. So we'll try with uh, the, um, the code we uh, see previously about the, uh, the log of um, PLPG SQL functions. So I create a PLPG SQL function, which does not much. I set my client min messages, GUC, to the log level. And then I execute the functions. As my hooks is not yet installed, I don't have any more information. If I load my hook, just like that, and I execute my function, then I see the message coming from my hook functions. I don't have the message here. I have it when I do the load. And if I execute my functions more than once, just like this, select F1 from generate series, then I have the, lo the log multiple times. So this helps me to know which functions I executed, and I can set it only when I want to use it. 
I have a load statement. I don't have an unload statement. You don't unload a shared library. When you exit, in my case here, in P I was in PSQL. When I exit PSQL, when I close the connection, the hook is unloaded. So we saw that we have around 20 hooks from an 8.3 to 9.1. In 9.2, we have two more hooks. We have a, log a logging hook and another planner hook. We also have a really interesting support for PLPG SQL hooks with PGXS. And we have an old hook which has enhanced capability. It's the object access hook. The object access hook, you couldn't use it with a drop statement. There was no drop statement support with the object access hook. It's used by SAPG SQL to allow you to give a Linux context to uh, allow or deny to drop an object. The logging hook. The logging hook was written by Martin Pilak. The real name of the hook is emit underscore log underscore hook. Its aim is to intercept messages before they are sent to the server log whatever the server log is. If it is event log, if it is syslog, if it is a PostgreSQL login collector, doesn't uh, matter. It will intercept the message and it will allow hooks to do custom log filtering. For example, you will be able to do uh, one log file per database. So you can have um, an extension that will be able to write your log messages in different log files. It's already used by an extension called pg underscore journal, which is available on pgxn. The other hook is the planner hook, written by Peter Jogan. Its real name is post post analyze hook. It's what will allow query normalization within pgstat statements in 9.2. And I think I'm about, it's about everything I have. So hooks are a really interesting feature of Postgres. It allows you to go behind to do more things than just what Postgres is capable to do. You can change its behavior in specific, uh, specific ways. You need to be cautious about which hooks you install. As we've seen, before, it's the hook responsibility to save the previous hook registered and to fire them when the hook is fired. So you need to be cautious about which hook you install. You need to be cautious to not install many hooks because, of course, more, the more you had hooks, the more you have uh, problems with performance. So only install the hooks that you really need. All the examples and all the slides are available on GitHub. All the examples we've seen, you have uh, normally working code in it that you can try and use. And that's about it. Do you have any questions? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. And I wanted to work on this. This is the second time I do this talk. I did it uh, at first. Uh, there was David already there. I already asked the same thing. I wanted to work on this uh, for uh, 9.2, but I didn't find the time to do it. I don't really know why. I suspect it's because it's really, uh, it really changes the behavior of Postgres, and it may be pretty bad if you do it, uh, if you do bad things with it. Maybe it's just because it's not user-facing, right? Well, we document a lot of non-user-facing. Yeah. It's still connected. But then, if you queue, internal submit, you queue. I mean, that's just... Yeah, 
you have documentation on how to write a frame that have wrappers. And you don't have that on how to write hooks. So yes, it's something we need to, uh, to do. Actually, there was a discussion on this on PGSQL hackers at some time when um, Peter wanted to add a new hook. But it didn't get, uh, we didn't get any documentation on it. Yes? Well, for example, if you uh, do, um, if I get back to the this example, um, on the shared pillow libraries here, I just have one hook, but I can set it to many hooks. I can say, for example, uh, only uh, an encrypted password is a specific one. But if I if I say uh, PG stat statements and um, which one is it? Uh, auto explain, which use the same hooks, then it's PG star statements that will um, PG star statements will simply set the global function pointer, and then um, auto explain will have its uh, underscore PG underscore init function fired. It will see the PG start statements function, so it needs to save it, so that we can use the two at the same time. So they would have to appear in this shared libraries uh, yeah. setting yeah. the debugger. And uh, how about the, the debugger? How uh, I have used the debugger for certain things like that. Do you have much experience with that yourself? Or do you have experience with the same inputs? Uh, the debugger? Uh, well, I find it quite, uh, quite interesting to use. Um, you need to first install the hook. So you need to uh, install the .so file or the .dll file. The .dll file, as far as I know, is already available uh, with the one-click installer of EnterpriseDB. Uh, I don't know if there is any Linux packages that allows you to put it on Linux. I guess you will have to compile the, uh, the debugger yourself. Once you've done that, you need to uh, add the, uh, the debugger extension on the database where you want to debug functions. And then you use a PG admin, which uh, will show you a nice uh, window with, uh, with everything in it to do uh, the, the debugging. And we'll, you will be able to do debugging on uh, usual functions and on trigger functions also. And it's Actually, I really, uh, I really like this tool. The provider provided by Enterprise DB is, um, I think, less interesting because it really, really slows down the the execution of functions. So that's why I wrote the log underscore functions module, which is really, really much quicker. But the provider, yes, it's a really fine tool. Yes. Sorry. The. Yes. Oops. This one. Yeah. I didn't put the slide yet on the PGCon website, but I will do it at the end of the talk. But if you want to find it, it's already on GitHub in its open office format. Another question? Nope. Well, thank you. <coughs>